Hello, Cottonwood. Today we will be reading from Psalm 119, verses 49 to 56. Remember your word to your servant, in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. The insolent utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your rules from of old, I take comfort, O Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my sojourning. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. This blessing has fallen to me that I have kept your precepts. My wife and I have been together for close to 15 years now. And like most other couples, we've kept a lot of the mementos and trinkets and cards and letters that we've given or written to each other over the years. Uh, they're fun to look back on every now and again and to just remind us of our relationship at that stage because like most other couples, we also get in arguments and fights every now and again. And I remember one argument about a year or two back that was particularly rough. And I remember it so vividly because I was actually right this time. No, that's not true. I was wrong. But anyways, I was very, being very stubborn and I really did not want to repent or apologize or concede in any way. And I had just worked myself into such a huff that I needed to just get away and be by myself. So I remember going to my room and closing the door and I don't know how this happened, but I ended up reading some of those letters that my wife had written me over the years. And as soon as I started reading, God got me. I felt instant conviction that I was not upholding the covenant that I had made to her, that I wasn't respecting her and loving her and honoring her like I had promised to do. And God used her words to snap me back into reality. And I love this declaration that the psalmist makes in our passage because like uh, those letters from my wife, God is using his word to remind the psalmist that his word is life and comfort and hope in the middle of the trials that the psalmist is going through. Um, and we could use all the comfort and hope and life that we can get. The thing is that sometimes we are tempted to look elsewhere for those things. I mean, the last year of our lives has left a lot of us staggering and knocked off our balance. And uh, we could naturally just tend to grasp for different things that will help us steady the ship and to be able to catch our breath. I mean, the problem is, though, that when we look for those things outside of God's word and we try to cling to things for our stability that are not found in the promises of God, we will eventually be disappointed. No matter whether we are feeling depressed or, or anxious or vulnerable or whatever the case may be, we cannot look for anything outside of God's word if we're looking for true hope, true life, and true comfort. You know, the catch is that we actually have to have God's word in our hearts before we can start to experience the benefits that the psalmist is talking about in our passage. You know, I'm reminded of a uh, passage in Joshua chapter 1, and most of us would be familiar with this. Uh, Moses has died, and now Joshua is going to be the leader of God's people. And God makes him a promise. He says that his ways will be prosperous and filled with good success. I don't know about you, but I want that for my life. But this promise is also attached to a commandment. You know, God tells Joshua, do not let this book of the law or my word depart from your lips. You need to meditate it. You need to keep it before you day and night. And as it is with, was with Joshua, so it is with us. If we want good success, if we want true comfort and life and hope in the midst of any affliction, we need to get God's word on our lips and in our heart because then our way will be prosperous and it will be filled with good success.